Nestling beneath the Fairfield Horseshoe in the Easdale Valley is this typical 17th century cottage. It is holiday accommodation now, but in the past it is said to be where William and Dorothy Wordsworth collected their milk. The view from Goody Bridge looks down into Grasmere and it was at the edge of Grasmere in the hamlet of Townend that William and Dorothy chose to live in Dove Cottage. The loveliest spot that man hath ever found. That's how Wordsworth described his new home and the gardens surrounding it and where he wrote much of his poetry and Dorothy her Grasmere journal. Grasmere is now a popular village with hundreds and thousands of tourists visiting each year. But in William and Dorothy's time, it was a small village with hill farming as the main occupation and also textiles and quarrying. William wrote about it. Embrace me then, ye hills, and close me in. Now in the clear and open day I feel your guardianship. I take it to my heart. Tis like the solemn shelter of the night. But I would call thee beautiful, for mild and soft and gay and beautiful thou art, dear valley, having in thy face a smile, though peaceful, full of gladness. Thou art pleased, pleased with thy crags and woody steeps, thy lake, its one green island and its winding shores, the multitude of little rocky hills, thy church and cottages of mountain stone clustered like stars, some few but single most, and lurking dimly in their shy retreats, or glancing at each other cheerful looks, like separated stars with clouds between. I'm standing in the drawing room in the house in Cockermouth, where William and Dorothy spent their early childhood. This is the grandest room in the house where William's father would have entertained people he wanted to impress. And the bookcase belonged to, bookcase and desk belonged to William and was given to the National Trust by his great granddaughter. The chairs here belong to the poet Robert Southey and the armchairs have, uh, the cases are covered and copied from a pattern of the 18th century called inch check. William and Dorothy were born within a year of each other in 1770 and 1771 and lived in this house in Cockermouth on the western edge of the Lake District where their father John was the legal and political agent to the Earl of Lonsdale. As children, William and Dorothy were inseparable. William wrote of Dorothy, she gave me eyes, she gave me ears, and humble cares and delicate fears, a heart, the fountain of sweet tears, and love and thought and joy. We think all five Wordsworth children could have shared the children's bedroom with the youngest sleeping in the willow cradle. They would have been able to look out over the river Derwent and the nearby fields, the playground William and Dorothy remembered with such affection and that William recalled in his autobiographical masterwork, The Prelude. Even children of the middling sort like the Wordsworths would have had only a few simple wooden or cloth toys and these would have been bought at fairs or markets or homemade. John and Anne probably had separate bedrooms not because they were unhappily married, but because that is how 18th century couples in houses with enough rooms to live in lived. It is likely they would have slept in these adjoining rooms. The fact that they had five children proves they made good use of the connecting door. This is the terrace where William and Dorothy loved to play and they would be looking over to the river and the River Derwent and the garden has been recreated in the way that it was thought to have been in the 18th century when there was 
fruit and vegetables and herbs and flowers for the family to eat. There are little slate plaques around with quotations from Dorothy and William. Everything green and overflowing with life, she writes on the 20th of April, 1800. And then the streams making a perpetual song with the thrushes. On the death of their mother, when William was eight, Dorothy was sent away to live with cousins in Halifax. It wasn't until 1795 that William and Dorothy re reunited. Dorothy had dreamed of the time when she and her brother might set up home together. After a time living in Dorset and Somerset, William and Dorothy moved to Dove Cottage on the 4.30 in the afternoon of the 21st of December, 1799. Exhausted, hungry and cold after walking here from Yorkshire. It had two rooms downstairs and a kitchen and four tiny bedrooms upstairs. Dove Cottage, built in the 17th century, used to be an inn, the Dove and the Olive Bough, and William Wordsworth wrote about it in his poem, The Wagoner. Where once the Dove and Olive Bough offered a greeting of good ale to all who entered Grasmere Vale, and called on him who must depart to leave it with a jovial heart, there, where the Dove and Olive Bough once hung, a poet harbours now, a simple water-drinking bard. Dorothy wrote about the cottage to her friend, Jane Marshall. Our cottage is quite large enough for us, though very small, and we have made it neat and comfortable within doors, and it looks very nice on the outside, for though the roses and honeysuckles which we have planted against it are only of this year's growth, yet it is covered all over with green leaves and scarlet flowers. We have made a lodging room of the parlour below stairs, which has a stone floor. Therefore, we have covered it all over with matting. The bed, though only a camp bed, is large enough for two people to sleep in. We sit in a room above stairs, and we have one lodging room with two single beds, a sort of lumber room, and a small, low, unsealed room, which I have papered with newspapers, and in which we have put a small bed without curtains. Dorothy kept a journal, but all that remains are her entries between May 1800 and January 1803. The journal tells of the Wordsworths' lives at Dove Cottage, but is also full of vivid descriptions of people and places, as Dorothy observes the Lake District landscape in all seasons, all weathers and at all times of day and night. For example, she describes Rydal Water on the 19th of October 1800. Rydal was very, very beautiful, the surface of the water quite still like a dim mirror, the colours of the large island exquisitely beautiful and the trees still fresh and green were magnified by the mists. Then on the 24th of November 1801, here is a single tree. It was yielding to the gusty wind with all its tender twigs. The sun shone upon it and it glanced in the wind like a flying sunshiny shower. It was a tree in shape with stem and branches, but it was like a spirit of water. Dorothy and William delighted in their new home and garden. Grasmere was their paradise and the garden was their Eden and Dorothy wrote about it many times in her journal. May the 6th, Thursday, 1802. A sweet morning. We have put the finishing touch to our bower and here we are sitting in the orchard. It is one o'clock. We are sitting upon a seat under the wall which I found my brother building up when I came to him with his apple. He had intended that it should have been done before I came. It is a nice, cool, shady spot. The small birds are singing, lambs bleating, cuckoo calling, the thrush sings by fits. Thomas Ashburner's axe is going quietly, without passion, in the orchard. Hens are cackling, flies humming, 
the women talking together at their doors. Plum and pear trees are in blossom, apple trees greenish. The opposite wood's green, the crows are cawing. We have heard the ravens. The ash trees are in blossom, birds flying all about us. The stitchwort is coming out. There is one budding lickness. The primroses are passing their prime. Celandine, violets and wood sorrel forevermore. Little geraniums and pansies on the wall. Dorothy chronicles in her journal the many walks she and William made over the fells of the Lake District and particularly in the Grasmere area and William reflects these in his poems. If from the public way you turn your steps up the tumultuous brook of Greenhead Gill you will suppose that with an upright path your feet must struggle. In such bold ascent the pastoral mountains front you face to face. But courage, for beside that boisterous brook the mountains have all opened out themselves and made a hidden valley of their own. No habitation there is seen, but such as journey thither find themselves alone with a few sheep, with rocks and stones, and kites that overhead are sailing in the sky. It is, in truth, an utter solitude. This is from William's poem, Michael, which he finished on the 9th of December, 1800, according to Dorothy's journal. It tells the story of an ageing shepherd, Michael, his wife, Isabel, and his only child, Luke. It was first published in Lyrical Ballads, a series of poems by William and Samuel Taylor Coleridge that were said to have begun the English Romantic movement in literature. Dorothy and William had only been in Grasmere for four days before they discovered this wonderful spot at Lankrig, which became one of their favourite walks along the terraces. In fact, here William composed most of the prelude, walking up and down the terraces, saying the poetry out aloud. But he had his dog with him, so if somebody was approaching, the dog would warn him and he would be quiet then. While William was walking along the terraces, he would scatter seeds of hazel and holly. So some of the hollies and the hazels we see now could well have been planted by him. Easdale, just up from Grasmere, was a favourite of Dorothy and William. There are delightful walks in that part of Grasmere called Easdale, wrote William. He claimed to have written thousands of verses 
on the banks of the brook that runs through is Easdale, which is, in some parts of its course, as wild and beautiful as a brook can be. Not far from Goody Bridge was one spot which became particularly dear to William. My dwelling, my other home, my out-of-doors abode. It was an April morning, fresh and clear, the rivulet, delighting in its strength, ran with a young man's speed, and yet the voice of waters which the winter had supplied was softened down into a vernal tone. The spirit of enjoyment and desire and hopes and wishes from all living things went circling like a multitude of sounds. The budding groves appeared as if in haste to spur the steps of June, as if their shades of various green were hindrances that stood between them and their object. Yet meanwhile there was such deep contentment in the air that every naked ash and tardy tree, yet leafless, seemed as though the countenance with which it looked on this delightful day were native to the summer. William named this Emma's Dell, Emma being his pseudonym for Dorothy. In July 1802, Dorothy and William left Dove Cottage for Calais and London, returning through Yorkshire to collect Mary, whom William married in October in Scarborough. Before setting out on their journey, Dorothy notes that William had finished his poem on going for Mary. Farewell, thou little nook of mountain ground, thou rocky corner in the lowest stair of that magnificent temple which doth bound one side of our whole valley with grandeur rare. Sweet garden orchard, eminently fair, the loveliest spot that man hath ever found. Farewell. We leave thee to heaven's peaceful care, thee and the cottage which thou dost surround. We go for one to whom ye will be dear, and she will prize this bower, this Indian shed, our own contrivance, building without peer. A gentle maid, whose heart is lowly bred, whose pleasures are in wild fields gathered. With joyousness and with a thoughtful cheer she'll come to you, to you herself will wed, and love the blessed life which we lead here. While living at Dove Cottage, William and Mary had three children, so it soon became too small for this growing family. In May 1808, the family and Dorothy moved to Allen Bank on the opposite side of Grasmere. Allen Bank was built in 1805 by a Liverpool lawyer, Richard Sharp. Initially, Wordsworth was outraged by the building of Allen Bank. In a letter to Richard Sharp, he called it a temple of abomination and told him that the house will stare you in the face from every part of the Vale of Grasmere and entirely destroy its character of simplicity and seclusion. However, Allen Bank was the only large house in Grasmere Wordsworth could rent, and actually for less money than Dove Cottage. Here was enough room for all his household as well as guests, and his children would be able to play on the slopes of Silver Howe and the banks of Grasmere Lake. We already feel the comfort of having each a room of our own, wrote Dorothy Wordsworth in June 1808. But as the year drew on, the Wordsworth began to change their minds as they realised that on windy days the various chimneys smoked appallingly. Dorothy called the house literally not habitable and complained that dishes are washed and no sooner set in the pantry than they are covered with smoke. In May 1810, now with five children, the family moved to the old parsonage in Grasmere. Dorothy regretted the loss of their wonderful views of Grasmere and Easdale. It was a sad year in the old parsonage in Grasmere because William and Mary lost two of their children there and they're buried in the churchyard and they didn't like looking across the churchyard to see their children's graves 
and so after a year they left and they took up residence in Rydal Mount, which became William Wordsworth's best loved family home for the greater part of his life from 1813 to his death in 1850 at the age of 80. Dorothy died at Rydal in 1855 and both, along with William's wife Mary and their children, are buried in the churchyard at Grasmere. Tis the sense of majesty and beauty and repose, a blended holiness of earth and sky, something that makes this individual sport, this small abiding place of many men, a termination and a last retreat, a centre come from wheresoe'er you will, a whole without dependence or defect, made for itself, and happy in itself, perfect contentment, unity centre. <laughs>